We're going to have some short, shallow talks. Short and shallow, that's the key point. We've got half an hour. We have four talks. We have Thomas Koch in the corner, giving two of them. Tim Sell giving one of them. And I'm giving one as well. So let's go. And first off is Tim Sell. Hello. Um, so my name is Tim. I work at Last FM, and uh, I'm a data engineer. And this talk is about Hive and why we decided to start using it at Last FM and what we use it for. And how do I skip? Oh, here we go. <coughs> so just a quick thing: uh, introduction to Last FM. Last FM is a music website. Uh, and we're powered by Squabbles, and a Squabble is like a track, an artist, and a timestamp. So people send this our information. Sorry. Ah. Can you hear me? Okay. So, Last of Him is a website powered by Squabbling. A Squabble is a track, an artist, and a timestamp. So users send us what music they listen to, and we provide them with certain information and feedback. And we also have personalized radio stations, which we based on those squabbles. And we have about 40 million users, more than 39 billion squabbles, and 400,000 personalized radio stations listen to every day. So we have a lot of data, and we need Hadoop to process it, because we have very large data sets that are pain, basically. So our current Hadoop cluster is quite big. 40, well, big by our standards. 44 nodes, 8 cores, 16 gig RAM, 1 terabyte disks. And it's mostly full as well. But, um, so Hadoop is uh, really good at batch processing. And we have all these really solid Java programs which are well tested and do really complicated tree-like structuring things. That, but they're, they're expensive to write, like they take a long time. So we use it for all sorts of things. We use it for generating charts that for, e for the users and what they've been listening to, reports, corrections of our metadata, which is crowdsourced, so it's often junk. Um, uh, site stats, neighbors, recommendations, all sorts of things. But one of the things that ha happens is the business people come along to the data team room and ask us questions that take up a lot of time. And sometimes we ask these questions ourselves, but they tend to come up with lots of trivial things that are difficult to, you don't really want to write a Java program. If you've ever written a Java program that you've thrown away straight away, it's a bit depressing. Like, they're quite long. <laughs> like, MapReduce programs aren't trivial in Java. Even in Dumbo, which has helped a lot, it's still uh, still quite time consuming. So. Um, we get a lot of ad hoc questions, and one of the things that Hive is good at is ad hoc questions. So that's why we're interested in Hive. What is Hive? Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure built on top of Hadoop. That's from their wiki. Um, so you get an SQL-like language for querying data sets. And you can start it from a shell, or you can submit a file of queries to it, et cetera. <coughs> so this is my brief graph of Hive. Uh, the big white box is Hadoop and all these data sets inside it, and you can partition it so that you can only c you can run SQL-like queries across just subsets of your tables and so on, and you have this SQL interface. And so why did we choose Hive? SQL is really familiar for <laughs> non-data engineers, like or people who don't like MapReduce or haven't really heard of it. They can still understand it fairly easily because it's so familiar. It integrates really well with existing data sets. You can have data sets which are external to Hive. You just sort of link to it. and uh, So you can play with data in different formats and just run SQL queries as if it's just a Hive data set. And the other thing is it just works when we tried to use it. So the main thing is that um, it's a higher level tool. And just having that tool is really powerful. Like somebody set it up. In fact, this person set it up. So this is the other reason we try to use it. But <laughs> it's just, uh, it's nice. So some of the questions we get are like trivial. This is just curious. We had some question about Rage Against Machine versus Joe from the X Factor who 
was they were trying to beat him to the Christmas number one, so we just grabbed it because we were curious. And then, so you have your basic my sequel like stuff, you know, you query by tracks ins and over insert dates and group by order by. And then you have like, what if I want to just find out some intersection? And these are real things that we wanted to know. Uh, so you just get it onto counts, blah, blah. And here is a uh, more complex one. I don't know if I'll bother explaining it too much, but basically we wanted to know how many scrubbles or how many times we'd played something on the radio that a user had already scrubbled, so they maybe owned it already or that it existed in their library. So this is a query that, put that does that. It's a, you've got a subselect inside it, you have a join. It's pretty trivial if you once you get used to it, really. So it's just complicated questions which aren't really very straightforward, but you can just sort of stick in an SQL query and query over huge data sets that are terabytes big, because they're a pain in the ass. Um, the other thing is that like, once we started using it for ad hoc stuff, we realized that joins are just so easy that why are we doing these other things like in long Java programs <laughs> when um, we don't have to? So this is a graph of, or chart of uh, this flow for bu building search indexes, because I build search indexes. And uh, so we have Scrobbles, a source from like in some completely different format, like Scrobbles, we turn them into charts, corrections, labels give us catalog information as well as we get them from Scrobbles. We just sort of push all that in, in different formats and different places mm -hmm. into Hive and we sort of use Hive as an abstraction layer just as a sort of intermediate place to put things. And then we just do this big join and we have a massive list of stuff that we just pull out and put in solar and then we have a search index. It's just a another tool that is good, basically, I think. Uh, so some of the things that aren't so great is, actually I think the second one, I should get rid of that because it hasn't happened in a long time. We haven't had an add a memory exception. I haven't, anyway. <laughs> but uh, also it doesn't support record IO, which we still have some big data sets in, but we just sort of turn them into plain text and then <coughs> deal with them. So that was my lightning talk. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> uh, have we got time for questions? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, the question is, does Hive queries affect performance? Uh, not really. They're as quick as any Java program that you write in MapReduce. In fact, sometimes they're more optimized than you would do it yourself. Uh, pig is sort of more procedural, I guess. Hi or declarative? I'm not really sure. <laughs> Hive is an is SQL. <laughs> it's it's just another tool. I don't know. How big is our data? Well, uh, depends on the data set, but uh, terabytes, many terabytes. Like the the I said, how big the cluster was? It was like 190 terabytes. Uh, it's very full. Uh, just no audio content in there. Yeah, that's just our other stuff. Mostly web weblogs are the bi our biggest data set. So. Any more questions? I think we're good. Okay. Um, all the slides on this will be up online. There's a lot more detail in here. We had to throw Tim off just to get on schedule. So thanks for Tim. And next we have...